Hi and welcome to another coding in C Sharp tutorial. Um, in the previous tutorial we looked at how to create and use arrays um, and we looked at how to use a for loop to go through each element in an array and maybe um, display each element in an array in a new line in the console. So for example um, we have this array here called names and it um, contains values of the string type and basically it's just a list of different names there, okay? And then uh, we get the length of the array and we've stored it in a uh, separate variable called array length. So we get the length of the names array or the basically the number of elements in this array, the number of items in the array, which is four. And then we use a for loop to go through each of these names in the array, each element in the array, and display it on a new line. So we use a counter I. Um, we keep looping through each element in the array until um, we hit the end of the array by referring to the, uh, by making sure the counter is less than the length of the array. And then we just keep um, increasing the counter by one for each iteration of this loop or for each item that we um, go through in the array. Okay, so here we then display uh, for each of the iteration of the loop, we display a name in the names array by um, um, grabbing its index starting from zero um, and using the counter there to, to get each one. Okay, so um, for loops are quite quite handy for going through arrays, but if we want to go through every element in the array and just do something with that element, um, and we know that we want to go through each and every element in the array in order, then we don't really need a counter and we don't really need the to know the length of the array and we don't really need to specify an increment if we use something called a for each loop because what a for each loop is basically does something um, for each element in an array so it goes through each element in an array and then you can specify what you want to do to the to each element in the array or what you want to do with each element in the array so we can actually um, cut some of our code here and do this in a more, um, in a, a much simpler way. So rather than writing a for loop, we can write a for each loop using the for each keyword. It's just one word, no spaces. So we can say for each string. So we need to um, refer to the data type string. That we're, that, so all, all of these items in the names array are string. And we basically say for each string value in the names array um, and then do what we want, maybe display each one on a new line. So we can refer to, we can just say string value or we can str say string name in names. Okay, so it doesn't really matter what we call this here. Um, we could just call it value or we could just um, have the singular form of plural names. So we can say for each string name in names, in the names array, close that bracket and then open and close uh, curly braces. So basically for each name in the names array, we want to display it on the screen. So we can just say console.writeline name. Okay, so let's go and test that. And there we go, Jim, Kate, Sam and Sally. So we see each name in this array on a new line in the console um, using a for each loop that basically goes through each individual name in the names array. Okay, now it doesn't matter what we call this here. This is just going to be like a temporary um, variable um, for each item, or each currently processed item uh, in the array. Um, in the loop. So we could say value and here we could say value as well. So it doesn't really matter what we call it. Um, we could say person, so for each person in names. It doesn't really matter. It's just a temporary kind of variable. Okay, so that's much simpler than writing a for loop um, if we want to go through each item in the array. That's it for this tutorial. What I will just mention though is if you're using um, Visual Studio or Xamarin on uh, 
win, uh, on Windows, you might just want to add a console.readline statement at the end of that um, code, just so it doesn't run the code and then quit the program, so you can actually see the output on screen before it disappears. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.